and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is KT and thank you for joining me. This video will be about, in general, food deserts. It's something you've probably heard about and it's something that might be facing your own community where you either know someone that is living in a food desert or perhaps you're yourself living in one. So the first thing for our purposes, I would just like to give a general description of what a food desert is. Um, as the name suggests, it's a place where food availability is not um, very accessible. You know, generally the people who are living there, there is a good percentage of them that live in poverty that can, and there are different percentages depending on who is making the definition of a food desert. I've seen some where it's 33% of the population in this area, you know, are in poverty, where another definition says 50%. And so it can vary a little bit, but that's not the only um, part of the definition. Also, generally, the citizens are without a car. The access to food becomes even more difficult when you're not able to easily get to a grocery store. To compound the lack of having a car, there's also the added point that generally the grocery store is somewhere between at least half a mile to a mile away from those citizens. And so imagine being in that situation where you do not have a car, you're already living in poverty, and the closest grocery store is at least a mile away. It would be difficult to get there. You know, you're not, it's not easy to allocate extra resources to pay for the transportation just to get to the grocery store. And so now that we've defined what a food desert is, the second thing that we'll need to do is talk about what I would say is the biggest issue facing food deserts. On the surface, a food desert would not be a food desert if just as easily as it sounds, a grocery store just moved in to the neighborhood. However, it clearly is not that easy where the grocery store would need the incentive of profits, honestly, to move into that location. So it's not as easy as writing to a grocery store, petitioning them to come into the city. It's generally larger than that where local governments, federal governments need to incentivize these businesses to move into these areas. So I'm in Jacksonville and I would say very fortunately for our citizens here, there has actually been legislation introduced to help incentivize grocery stores to move into areas that Jacksonville has designated as food deserts. Um, in the article that I have put into the link in the description below, it just talks very briefly about that move that they're making. It was actually um, in 2019 and they actually, what is really nice, provide information for the two Congress people that have introduced this um, for Jacksonville. And so if, you know, this is something that actually you feel like either affects you or something that you would just like to do more for, I would say certainly reach out to your local um, government, just whoever is available for you and ask them what they are doing about this and if they are moving forward with it. Because if so, it could mean really great things for our communities. There also is a bipartisan bill that was introduced, um, you know, in the Senate as well regarding food deserts. And that also could be really promising for just giving local governments more resources financially to be able to incentivize these grocery stores to move into these areas. And these incentives are honestly really important because grocery stores are not in the philanthropy, philanthropy <laughs> business. They are in the business business. They want to make profits even if their margins are really low and I don't understand how they're staying in business, 
they are honestly trying to make a profit with governments incentivizing them, then they can actually make that profit and perhaps work on reallocating their risk when it comes to these neighborhoods. And I will say certainly thank you again for joining me in another video. If you so far like the types of videos that I am sharing on my channel, go ahead and like this video, please and thank you. And then also subscribe so that you can in the future just get notifications about my YouTube videos. There's also a notification bell that you can tap as well to make sure that you specifically get those notifications. And the third thing that I think is important when we talk about food deserts is that this is not the only issue facing these communities because we said that the definition alone in defining what a food desert is include that many of the people are in poverty, many of the people do not have a car, the grocery store is far away, and for me, I would say I have fourth thing in there that they are lacking many opportunities. You know, they're lacking on a very essential level access to food, um, but with the poverty, they're very likely missing opportunities for work. Um, it is an education issue generally in those areas as well. So focusing on food deserts is a great and noble thing with getting grocery stores inside of that area but it's not the only thing that those areas need. I know there are really great organizations that are trying to focus on those communities and come at the situations plaguing them from different standpoints because once we perhaps get a grocery store in these areas, that will be great. Then we will probably need to move on to the next issue as well. You know, how do we provide more opportunities in those areas. The grocery store actually is going to be one of those ways that will help with that. They are going to have jobs for the grocery store. Um, it is going to perhaps incentivize other businesses to move in as well, which will stimulate the economy, which is something everyone's talking about these days. And that could be really great in those neighborhoods but we, you know, something needs to happen first. Someone needs to be willing to incentivize those companies. Someone needs to be willing to take that extra, what may be perceived as risk before anything really starts to happen. And that brings me to the fourth thing with food deserts. And that is what you can do about them. If it's something that you feel that you would like to help combat in society and find a solution to, then I would say very likely the thing that most people can do is contact their local representatives, vote when it's available, go to those city hall meetings, go to any type of Q&A session that your local representatives are having, send the calls, write the surveys, send them in so that they know that it's something that is important and that they need to address in your community. If they're not receiving the feedback that this is the direction they should be going, then they're not going to pursue it. It would be great to think that, you know, everything will just happen the way it should and everyone will get what they need and what they deserve, but that's not quite always the way it works out. And sometimes you need to make sure that people know that we are paying attention and it's something that is important to us. And so if you fall into that category and this is one of those things that you are actually fired up about, then I would say go through those local routes and make sure that your voice is heard when it comes to these situations. The last thing is I think there's another way to help relieve these issues and it more has to do with local communities coming together and helping to fix these issues themselves and with that i mean farmers markets i have seen farmers markets in great locations and by great i mean i could see a Publix from the farmers market 
in my opinion, it's a wasted opportunity to serve underprivileged areas, but that's not the point of all farmers markets. And I have also seen farmers markets in areas where I did not know where I would even see another Publix for miles and miles. And it just depends on what that particular farmers market, what their goal is. In my opinion, farmers markets are something that can really help address this issue as far as getting high quality food in under serviced areas. And then they can expand because I would say in every community there are people who, you know, make goods. They knit scarves, they fix bikes, you know, those type of things are everywhere and with farmers markets it could just be one of those great places where people can really come together get to know their community and solve a little issue we call food deserts i would say myself if i ever had the opportunity to be involved in a farmers market that would be something i would love to do as far as finding a location that legitimately could help an underserviced area because I believe it's something that's needed and with something like a farmers market if it's perhaps done by a nonprofit then if there are low margins for the institution in general then it doesn't matter because it's a nonprofit you know you're doing some you're doing this because it is a passion it is something you believe needs to be done and when you see that people are being served in these areas, it will make the payoff all the better for you. And that is certainly not the case with grocery stores. Not that it's a bad thing, they are running a business. But when it comes to people who need extra help and who have perhaps been ignored for so long, we need to find a way around that and also with farmers markets because of that local aspect where there's different vendors then i personally feel like it feels like you're giving back more to the community because those different vendors are what i call like real small businesses and each one of those are going to be impacted pretty greatly by just having a new type of customer base and so that is generally what I wanted to share in this video today, just my thoughts about food deserts. I should have said this at the beginning, but September is Hunger Awareness Month. And so I also thought this was a great place to put this video here in September. It is also my birth month, which is why those flowers are there in the background. And so if you once again like these videos, Go ahead and like the video, hit the thumbs up, and then subscribe and turn the notifications on so that you can see more videos from me. And I will see you in another video. Bye!